Hi everyone, this is Christina. My friend Shivas Lewis is running the live streams 3D shenanigans. Always great. Maybe join us next time. I'll link to it in the description below. This week we had four episodes and in one of them the question came up in the chat. What is the difference between a bump map, normal and displacement? I tried to explain that in the chat, but oh boy, I'm so bad at explaining only with words. So I decided to make this video about that topic. I have chosen a stone texture from Texture Haven. Great platform. They are specialized in environment textures. I have chosen those medieval blocks. And if you see a texture like this, where you see those protrusions here, on the surface you immediately know this has a displacement map because that is the major difference bump and normal which are yeah they are optical illusions they make the surface look like something is going on it is 3d there are crevices protrusions and so on i can't take away the displacement here separately but we will see that in a moment in substance painter where i prepared a simple example to show you that but as soon as you see that you know okay this is made with a displacement map if the displacement wouldn't be there this here would really look like a sphere a smooth edge no protrusions or whatsoever let's go quickly through those maps here they are ordered alphabetically. I start with the diffuse because the diffuse is our base color. In some materials that is a photo taken of the object. Here it isn't. At first glance that looks a bit flat but it really works good together with the other maps because this here is made of all those maps. They work together to make it look like this. So here it is called the diffuse. Other common terms are base color, color or albedo. That is the base of our material and the other maps are added on top. Let's now go through them from top to bottom. Here we have the AO which stands for ambient occlusion. Sometimes it's also called only occlusion. And that is a grayscale map which adds those gray tones to our material. AO is kind of shadowing in the object itself where the stones cast shadows or darkness on other parts. I always find it kind of hard to explain how that really works. So I'll show you an example. I've opened our Patreon here. Those headphones were the model for November. Although this is quite small render here, you can clearly see that connector that goes up here because of that shadow that is behind. And here where this is fitted to the main part, you can see those parts, you can read the surface, you can read the object. If I look at that in Blender, this is the EV preview of that object. Well, here you can't read the shapes because no ambient occlusion is there. If I activate it now, that becomes much more readable. Not as good as in the render, but you can clearly see here that connector now, if I deactivate it, that's gone. So that is what ambient occlusion does. And that is added with this grayscale map. And the next one then is the bump. Also a grayscale map, but that doesn't add color itself. The bump works with those values. It gives us the illusion parts of the surface are pushed in or are coming out. Black means it's the deepest part that's pushed in most. White means that's the part that comes out most. Gray tones work in between according to their values. We will see how that looks on the object in Substance Painter. The diffuse was that color. We already had that. Then we have the displacement and this displacement map at first glance, it might seem a little bit too soft, but it works really great together with the other maps. And that is what gives us those irregularities on the surface that really changes the mesh. Now this here, this bump, this whole thing can be one single face and the bump works. Displacement, that wouldn't work at all. The displacement really changes our mesh. So it needs a really high resolution and that's the drawback of the displacement. 
we see that here that really looks great but to use it we have to increase the mesh resolution a lot and yeah that is really a drawback with the displacement i skipped the normal for now because despite of the diffuse all other maps we see here ao bump displacement also roughness and specular are grayscale maps the normal is kind of a special map we come to that in a moment the roughness describes how rough is our surface those maps here with this and the specular at least they kind of work like a mask in photoshop for example which means white shows the effect in full strength black hides the effect totally and grayscales work according to the values somewhere in between which means when we see here those very light parts that means here the surface is really rough and here we see gray tones they are rough but not as much as those crevices here and if you imagine this is a stone wall those parts here they are the mortar between the stones which keep them together they are pushed in and not as exposed to weather conditions like rain or something like that as the stones are the stones are more exposed to rain so they are not that rough like the mortar is and then we have the specular map that just tells us how specular is our surface with stones we expect them not to be specular at all or not much and therefore that map is almost black everywhere i don't know how that comes through in the video but here where we have the surfaces from the stones see that here those white flags here here is a bit of specularity i increase this and move this around i hope you can see that in the video there isn't much but it is there so we also use a specular channel in our material but the black hides the specularity almost everywhere and now let's come to the normal like i mentioned that is a special case and you will see why this is how the normal for this material looks like and if you see a map where you see those pinkish bluish colors you immediately know okay that is a normal map this normal map looks very fancy if we compare this to the bump you can see similarities but if you have a closer look here for example if i go to the bump you see here that looks like really this is a stone this is a stone here is the mortar in the normal map that looks more like this is a complete piece of stone here the bump uses this direction dark goes in white comes out the normal map also considers the light direction and how the surfaces are angled to each other and we will see the difference in a moment in substance painter these are the maps in a really short rush through let's have a look how that all works together in substance painter and this is a very simple piece two faces i made a bit of a soft corner and then subdivided them very high for the displacement for the bump and the normal i would only need a few faces here one here one here and maybe the bevel on the corner but for the displacement we really need that high of a mesh and sometimes that even isn't enough this is just you could say a wall corner here and when you look down here this are more than 32,000 faces only for this part here you might think that is overdone but you will see it isn't here we have that wall corner in substance painter and what you see here is just the diffuse which in this case is called color i'm using the metal roughness workflow in the other workflow i believe it is called diffuse so i'm not sure but anyway this is our plain color map that looks like that and when i rotate the environment the light you can see yes of course we see the different lighting but the surface itself isn't reacting to the light at all what i will activate are all those other channels which don't really enhance the 3d effect let me say it like this the ao now we see those darker parts 
specularity doesn't do much here you've seen that is almost black and then we also have the roughness map that does a little bit but not much this is how our stone wall looks before we add a bump a height or the displacement i forgot to mention that here it is called bump it often is also called height because it works with the height pushes in pushes out that is often called hate and that is also the case here in Substance Painter. I activate that now. If you see something like that, that kind of looks ugly here, don't mind about that. You can tone that down and I almost always do that. Apps work different depending on the render engine they use, depending on the workflow. They work different with the bump, with the hate map. So in this case, in Painter I've just put in a fill layer and that fill layer has all those channels here so I can go to the height and tone it down till I have something I like. And in Blender and other apps you can change the strength of it so you can tone that down. In some apps you really need it in the strength here not so much. So this is how it looks with the height map. And if I now rotate the environment, the light, we begin to see that really interacts with the surface now. When you look here at this stone, the shadows in the surface are changing. I deactivate that and now I take the normal map, that fancy one with that blue and pinkish stones. And you see that kind of does the same, but yeah, in another way. Look at this stone here. When I deactivate the normal and activate the height, that looks different. Here we kind of see this part is really coming out. Here are dents in the wall and with that one here, you can't see that that good. With the normal, which considers how angular the surfaces are to each other, that really shows good. Well, the question was, do I use the bump? Do I use the normal? If we don't use displacement, which we will see in a moment. In general, I mix them both. Here we see that with the normal, if I now activate the height in addition, look what happens. We still have that illusion from the normal, but we also have more intricate details on the surface. But in this case, I lower the height even more something like that. So in general I use them together. In Death Studio it isn't a problem at all. They are there both and you can also play with the strengths for both. In Blender you kind of have to trick the software because the principal shader of Blender doesn't have a bump or a hate input anymore that works with the normal but you can use the bump in there and also you combine them together. That's a little bit tricky and too much for this video. I only wanted to show how those maps work. I will now rotate this corner and you see this is totally straight. That would look exactly the same on one face only. We don't need that high mesh resolution for the bump and the normal. I didn't pull in another object where we only have that one face, but believe me, the bump and the normal don't need that mesh resolution. That would work on one single face. The displacement doesn't. I've already mentioned that, but that really gives us reality. If I activate it now, you see nothing because I've set the displacement to zero. Displacement came with 2019.1. I'm not sure, but I guess in the older versions you don't have the displacement. So maybe it's worth updating. And we find that here. You can choose between the height channel, which I don't. I use it from the displacement and this is set to zero. Now I totally exaggerate this, but watch what happens. So you see, this really changes the mesh. Of course, this is totally exaggerated, but anyway. And here you also have the possibility, they call it tessellation. That's the subdivision surface modifier from Blender, you could say so. Or what 
we have in that studio as sub D. So if I crank that up, well, here with that exaggerated, that doesn't do much, but you see a little bit is changing in the surface. But this is way too high. I just reset this to the defaults and crank that up a little bit so we can just see the stones protruding out, maybe 0 08, something like that. And we also see that now when I rotate this here, you can see that isn't a flat corner anymore. So this works in every direction and that is what displacement does. If I scroll in closer and pick that up a little bit more, you can see how that works. That really changes the surface of our object. About that resolution, which I said that is quite high here, but if I use this one, you will see that changes the surface. At some point there are no changes anymore, or not much, but here you see how the surface changes. And if you see something like that, that is a sign that your mesh resolution wasn't really high enough. So that is not overdone for a surface like that. You would need that. Do I use displacement? Really not often. I rarely use it. I always think twice. Do I use it or not? And I only use it when I really have close up shots with surfaces where, yeah, well, when I have somebody standing here and this is inside in the close up shot, it would look weird when it looks like that. You would see that immediately, hey, there is something wrong, there is something going on. If I only see that from afar, you don't recognize that that much. And often when other objects are in the scene, the eye is distracted and by using the height and the normal map, this gives the eye of the viewer enough to see, okay, this is not a flat surface, there is something going on that's 3D. But the displacement here in a close-up shot, yes, then I would use it. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. And if you like my contents, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Have a great time. Bye bye.